Welcome to my talk about OpenAI and Laravel. Um, to be honest, this is my first talk in public, so um, I hope <laughs> it will be good, a good experience. Um, yes. Um, fun fact, I generated this um, image with Dolly, the OpenAI, OpenAI model for image generation. I asked for a robot pair programming with me, so <laughs> <laughs> that's what I got from the API. Um, yes, um, as Ruzan said, I'm working as a full stack developer for already more than 10 years at Hostech. Um, it's a web hosting company based here in Switzerland. Um, I'm married, have two kids, and yeah, I'm a PHP and Laravel enthusiast. <laughs> Obviously, that's the reason why I'm here. So, um, what to expect from my talk? Um, first, we talk a little bit about all the terms used in this environment. Then we have some preconditions we have to um, met before we can work with uh, OpenAI. Then um, we do a little live coding with a text completion and a little chat GPT implementation in Laravel. And then I have a little pest test to show <laughs> Um, how we can test our application using OpenAI. And if there's still time left, I have some more code examples to show. Yes, uh, I think all of you are familiar with um, ChatGPT and what it is. Um, OpenAI is the company behind ChatGPT and ChatGPT 3 and 4 are the models which the uh, ChatGPT is based on. So it's a thing. Um, they learned all the from all the text that's available on the internet and put it into this GPT-3 or 4 model, and the 4 is more capable. Um, there is one thing you have to know about GPT-4. It's still beta, so not everybody has access to it. You have to apply for access, but it's quite easy to get GPT-4, but if you try to use it and you don't have access, yet you will get a 404 from the API that this model does not exist. Um, as I mentioned before, DALI, this is the model to generate images from a text prompt. Um, prompt, this is the input you provide for, for the open AI or for the, <coughs> for the AI. And based on this prompt, the AI generates the content you will get back. So the text, the image, whatever you are asking for. Um, yes, and as Huzal mentioned before the talk, I think um, GitHub Copilot, most of us, I think, are familiar with this tool. It's based on um, ChatGPT. Uh, no, it's based on a model code X from OpenAI, but they are going to switch to GPT-4. Um, it's called GitHub Copilot X, something like that, it's, which should be released within the couple of weeks or months, I guess, I don't know exactly. Yeah. About the preconditions, you need an OpenAI account. Um, then you need um, your API key here. And it's strange, I don't see the same thing here. So um, <laughs> you need to um, pay them for the API. The API isn't for free. Um, they have a token-based um, pricing model, so you pay, uh, pay per use. So the more you are using it, the more you have to pay. Um, it looks really, really cheap, so a thousand tokens is um, much less than a dollar. Depends on which model you are using, image creation. I think it's a bit more expensive, but it's still two cents per one megabyte image. That's um, uh, a fair price, I guess, but if you are using the API heavily, so if you are building a SaaS, you are burning the tokens very fast and you have to be aware of that. But you can set nice um, hard and soft limits so they will warn you when you reach the limit or block you from the API access to reach the hard limit. So, then show me the code. Let's exit uh, presentation and 
switch to the Laravel installation. Um, this is plain um, Laravel installation. The only thing I did, um, I set it up with um, past PHP to get it ready for the talk. Um, the first thing we are going to do, I think you all know this command, this inspire command that's provided with every Laravel application with um, returns a random um, quote from a famous person, but they are all hard coded in the Laravel um, source code. And it would be nice to have a little more dynamic um, version of this command. So <coughs> we can create a new inspire command. We call it AI inspire. And we are going to use OpenAI here. Um, first of all, um, we need to install the, the library. It's this OpenAI PHP Laravel library. It's actually this package is only a facade wrapper for the PHP, um, for the generic PHP client. It works with Symfony as well. It works in plain PHP um, projects. Quite similar, only without the Laravel facade. So we are going to install this one. And then we have to publish the configuration. And the only thing we have to do is to set our um, API key in the environment file, but I already did this. Mm. So <laughs> <laughs> you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see my key. <laughs> Good. Um, then we have the OpenAI facade. There are some various endpoints or um, endpoints we can call. And there, <laughs> there is a reference on the website. <laughs> Let's pause for it. Yeah. Um, and here is the description from OpenAI for all the endpoints. The one we are using now is the completion endpoint where we can um, ask or start with a text and the AI will complete this text. So we can com call completion, create, then we have to tell it which model to use. Um, And we have to ask for a prompt. Um, it's yeah, it's um, text da Vinci. Um, there are more. Uh, it's Curie and all the famous person. But the text da Vinci is the most capable of this um, text completion models. Right, an inspiring quote and name the author. So um, we are passing two blank lines as well. Um, that's because the return is better when we um, force the AI to start a new, new line. Um, and this talk isn't about um, prompt engineering. There's much, much more to say, but it makes a difference if there are two blank lines or not. <laughs> it sounds silly, but yeah. Then um, let's call our new inspire command. Um, the open AI key is missing. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> You're right. Thanks. It's this one here. Great. So that what we get back from the API or um, from the library, um, we can create become we came back a create response object. We have um, an array of choices, and within this choice, the, there is the text. So we can comment this out and say this. Not input um, the response choices, the first one and the text. Um, as you can see here, the library is fully typed, so the, your ID knows 
what's in there. Now um, we have built our um, inspire command, but um, as you can see here, um, we have this silly blank line. Um, we should trim the answer and then we will get a nice quote. Um, one thing um, we see here now is the, uh, the output is truncated randomly. Um, this is because they have a max token limit, so you can say how many tokens you want to use, and the default is, I think, 10 tokens, so that's probably two less, and now we are getting back the full answer. Um, there is even more you can do here, so you can say, for example, um, n like three, and then when you do it again, you have to de de this. <laughs> Takes a little bit longer because it's creating three choices instead of only one. Um, there is another option and you can say best of three, then it's creating three options in the background, but returning only the best option or what the AI thinks is the best option. <laughs> it's probably not the same what you are thinking is <laughs> the best option. Option. And one more to show is, is temperature. Um, it takes a float value from zero to two. Um, default is one. If we are going all the way down to, to zero, um, it makes the result, oh, should have removed this, remove this. So it makes the result more deterministic. So when we are running the inspire command multiple times, we most likely get always the same. And we, when we turn it up to full height, um, the API, uh, the AI is more creative. So it's not really, <laughs> um, it's it's not really obvious right now. But when we are changing this and say. Um, let's say PHP is it's really a mess. So you have to be really careful and do some prompt, uh, not only prompt engineering, parameter engineering, what's the best fit for your um, output. Yep. Sometimes it's helpful that to make it more creative, but most of the time you will get back only dumb result or it's making up some stuff that isn't true when you're asking for um, more realistic, thing, realistic things than just um, quotes. Yep. Um, this was my first example, this um, inspiring quotes. Um, and then the next one is I want to create a little chat GPT um, application here in, in Laravel. Um, chat GPT uh, works like a normal chat. So you are asking a question, you get an answer and you can ask uh, another question. So the first thing we have to do, we need something to store our messages. And we can have a method to that one, so to add a message. We need um, a role and we need uh, yeah, let's call it a message. List type. Mm, pardon? <laughs> you can't list the types. <laughs> no, uh, sorry, I, I can't. It's, it's, uh, it's not possible anymore for me. <laughs> so, and, but it's hard to code without um, co-pilot. <laughs> so, good. We have um, this um, little helper function, and then we can start initializing um, 
the chat. First of all, um, there are three possible roles. It's the assistant, this is the AI, it's the user, that is you or a guy who's talking to the AI, and then there is system, so we can um, tell the AI how to behave. Um, you are a friendly Laravel developer. Um, <laughs> why this is important, we will see this later. Um, then the assistant, um, how can I help you today? Next, we have to ask the user for an input. Oops, two and quotes there. And we have to store this somewhere. Then what we can do, we can add this input as a message. This is a message from the user and we put there the input. And then go to our OpenAI chat and create. We are using GPT. 3.5 Turbo here. Um, we could use 4, but it's it's a bit slower, so... Yeah. Right, thanks a lot. ChatGPT. And then we have to pass all our messages here. And let's see what we have so far. Um, I think we need a better signature here. And then yes, um, we can ask for the most simple um, question, but there, this is not of type. Huh. Ooh, what I've missed here. Oh, this one. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> let's do it different. I don't know what the type O is, so let's copy it from here. <laughs> let's cheat a little bit. So, um, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Um, the thing, it's a silly um, typo, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, it's because I named it. The import. Ah, yeah, the command imports. Yes. Yeah, all the imports are missing. Ah, it's the open AI as well. The namespace. And the namespace. Oh, I messed it up. Sorry for that. <laughs> um, going back to this one. Um, we are stealing only parts and leave all the stuff that is fine. Uh, so, try again. So, one plus one. So, that's the thing we want. Perfect. Sorry for that. <laughs> the, um, the chat create response is um, quite similar to the completion response. Um, it have choices as well, but um, it re returns not a text, it returns a message with the role and um, the content. So we can extract the message from here, um, output this message and add it as a message um, to this array. So, 
when we are asking again for one plus one, um, it tells us the sum is two. And as we copy the code, there is already an input asking if there is something else the AI can help us with. If we are going to type no, it will break and otherwise we are in a while true loop with chat GPT in an endless discussion. We can do say, um, silly things like no, it is three. And it will be friendly because we told it to be friendly. <laughs> and, um, but it says us the sum is two. Then we can quit. Um, something else we can ask for. Um, create a migration for a user model because um, we said the AI that he's a Laravel developer he is the AI is knowing that we are asking for a Laravel migration and we have to wait what is coming up with um, this takes a very long time because yeah it's a longer um, response but here is the output with this um, migration. Um, but it would be nice when we can see how the AI is creating the response and seeing the output while um, the AI is creating the response. Therefore, OpenAI has the option to return instead of the response as one um, big response, we can ask for a stream then we will get back a stream object. This is in the background, this is a um, generator. So um, for each as response, we have to loop and then we can DD this response here. Try it again, do this silly question. And now, we are getting still choices, but not the complete response. It's only the delta and in the first run the, or in the first thing we get back from the API and the content is null. Um, if you are not doing a DD, instead we are doing a dump. Um, we can see that it's returning all the responses and they all do have a little part of the response. Um, so what we can do now is say the message is not returned in one go. So we have to build the message from the delta and delta is from the response. Oops, choices, the delta and the content. Yep. Um, just to make sure it works as expected, we can dump delta here and see that it looks quite good. Um, basically, it returns every time a new token is added to the response. So what we can do now is building up this message because we need the message down here. We don't need this info anymore. We don't need this one. Um, Laravel has no way to build in way to provide um, streamed responses here, but we can fall back to what Symfony is providing us here, and I have to cheat a little bit. Um, <laughs> it's right, and then it's important to cast it. It's not because I like it, it's because it's necessary. <laughs> and this should do the trick. So we do the same again, right? Uh, migration for a user and we can extend it with a um, team model relation just to see if it works again. So we can see how the 
response is building up and for sure it's going to take care of this um, team input. Yep, that's it. That's a little um, chat GPT in, uh, in implementation in, in Laravel. No, it's not exit, it's, it's no. <laughs> um, the output you get from the AI is not deterministic, so you always get different results. Um, the hardest thing, I think, is prompt engineering and then parsing the output you get back from the AI to build a useful product out of it. Um, then the other thing I want to show is how to test um, this integration. Uh, there is a, it created this um, little inspire test. It tests the inspire command. No, type here, doesn't matter. Um, we can use the OpenAI facade again, like we are familiar from um, Laravel, we can fake, uh, call the fake um, method. Here we can provide an array of um, fake responses. Uh, we are using a completion here, so let's create a fake response and the only thing we care about is that we want to set the first choice the text to blah blah <laughs> and then we can call our artisan command ai inspire um, and expect the output to be blah blah and assert that it is successful and fingers crossed, um, it works and it doesn't hit the OpenAI API. It just ensures that the command is, returns the correct answer. And, and the inspire command parse also uses the response. Good. Um, one last thing to show here. Um, we can not only fake the responses, we can make sure that we are um, using the API in the proper way. So we can use the AI facade again. On the completions endpoint, assert, send, and then pass in a function which accepts uh, method and an array of params, or it's maybe attributes would be better. Um, can do a little dd here. Um, we are seeing we are getting as the method the create because we called the create method on the completion endpoint and we have all the parameters passed in the API call. So we can do something here, like we are expect that the method to be create and from the attributes we expect the prompt or yeah, it doesn't matter. We expect the model to be Darwin text Darwin G103. And if the expectation passes, return true. So when we are running the test again, everything working fine. When we are going to make modifications to our um, inspire command and changing accidentally the model, our test will fail and telling us that you are not using the right or using the, doing the right request anymore. Um, 
there are more um, testing for more options you have here. You can say, um, I will assert that there is exactly one request made on this um, completions endpoint. So if we are saying that they are two, it's telling us that there are not, we didn't make two requests, but what is possible, we can pass here multiple responses. Call the um, command twice, but um, other stuff, and then we can expect on the second run it to return some other stuff. And it's working again. Um, we can do this on every endpoint, um, and then now it's telling us that there was no um, resource from the type chat sent, but there are other um, thing like assert not sent. So we can test that we are, when we are calling the inspire command, we are not using the chat endpoint, so we are using the um, <coughs> completion endpoint. Um, this way, or this implementation, it's familiar from the Laravel facade. It's highly inspired by the Laravel facade. It behaves more or less exactly the same way like the mail facade does. You, that's it. That's all I think I have for you today. So um, I hope you enjoyed my talk. And if you want to see more of this um, AI stuff, um, I'm posting sometimes on Twitter about it when we are the, adding new features to this um, client library. And I have a blog on my name, it's geri.dev. Um, it's not that much there, but I, I try to add more content there about all this AI and PHP related um, topics. Yeah. That's it. Thank you very much for your time.